fans, who's ready for some rugby? Come on! Good evening and welcome to Game 3 of the Tri-Nations Rugby Cup. I'm Scott Squires, my broadcast partner is Brian Ray, and this evening we've got two teams that are not Canada. One of them is England, one of them is the United States. Team England wearing their all-white kits with a little bit of black and red trim with the English rose adorning the upper left chest. And for Team USA, they are wearing their USA Man, blue with a little top. white and blue trim. Up. Put your hands together. Who's ready for some rugby? Let's go. Come on. So we are just about set here for kickoff. Welcome to Wolfville, Nova Scotia, and game three of the Tri Nations Cup. England will kick off to the United States. The USA lost to Canada. England defeated Canada. But what we will see here this evening, well, we'll have to wait and see. And we are underway. England, able to run onto that kickoff, and they get the ball right away. They were aggressive against Canada. They start aggressively here against the USA. There you see a couple of quick passes as they work it down the line, down to the corner. Here they come early on, only a few seconds in. That's, and they are down in the corner, Brian, and what a start. Uh, that's Abby down in the corner. They've got her listed on 11 on the team sheet, but she's actually wearing 14 today as she did the other day. I don't know why they keep trying to fool us, but that was uh, some, similar to what we saw early against Canada. England just working the overlap out wide and using Dow's speed. So the USA is going to have to get up faster and shut that ball down before it reaches her. She's the danger man. Of course, we saw Tuima setting that up. She was another standout. Uh, both of those England internationals uh, in that back line. So certainly they'll have to keep a, an eye on them. And that's not the start that the USA would have wanted. Absolutely not. So you look at these two teams. As I mentioned, Canada handled the USA pretty handily in the first game of this Tri-Nations Cup. And then, of course, England uh, had a very good performance against Canada. So I guess, you know, the easy way to look at it is to say, well, Canada beat USA by a good amount. USA beat Canada. So odds on favor, USA might be in trouble here against the U.S. or against England. But what do you look for? For the USA, what do they have to do to get to this English t English side? Right, this is their uh, last game of the tournament, uh, and really, they just want to play their game. They just want to, like we saw with Canada, trying to force things. The other day. They just want to, to calm down, not get overwhelmed by this England side, yeah, focus on their own game, England and just try and uh, you know Lillian do their Stoker. own things, and not worry about the score so much. The score will take care of itself at the end. So, uh, just. And, and I think, as we just said, shutting down that outside channel with uh, Tuima and Dow out there and also L uh, Lillian Stoger Goddard out in the wing uh, is going to be key for them, and certainly that's not what they did just a few seconds ago. So they credit the try to Lillian Stoger, and this English side, we saw that against Canada, there's no let-up. They just keep coming at you in waves. There's a little fake pass. Nice play. The U.S. defense converges very quickly. And they come up with the ball. Grabbing it there was Mata Hingano for USA. Hingano, the captain. She's got two caps in the HSBC 7 Series already, so already highly rated by the American selectors. So just underway, a couple of minutes into this first half. USA, left to right on your screen, wearing the dark blue. England, right to left, wearing the all-white. There's Dale Hall in the middle today, signaling a holding on penalty at the breakdown. USA picks that ball up, quick pass there. They try to work it down the line. That went off the fingertips of Tiana Aau. One of two Aaus in this lineup, Tiana and Tiara. Yeah, as you mentioned them, they are actually twin sisters from Portland, Oregon. Yeah, they go to Central Washington uh, University. And they've got another sister, Sui, who's in the squad but not dressed today. And an older sister, Naomi, who also plays. So rugby certainly in their blood. A lot of Aaus in the rugby circles. And the USA is certainly glad to have two of them Fine. in this international match. Scrum down just right in front of us. Our broadcast position is just to the right of the midfield stripe on the England side of the field. England made quite a few changes to the pack ahead of this one, just keeping everyone fresh ahead of their last game on Saturday at Wanderers Field. They've got new halfbacks as well. Ella Virvas and Ellie Green 
Uh, Green came on as a replacement the other day for Zoe Harrison, and she looked quite composed. Uh, similar Coach. game. She can kick and uh, she can run. So Find. Uh, certainly she'll be looking to make a statement Set. today. Harrison, of course, the international senior level. Rivers taps it in. Always, that, always enjoy that little tap that they give on the top just before they they uh, roll that ball into the scrum. Just that nice little trigger there. All of those little idiosyncrasies that I like to enjoy in this game of rugby. A wonderful, fast, physical game. And there's something else that England does very well is use the kicking game. Like we just said, Ellie can kick. Uh, she's looking in plenty of space in behind the American back line there. Gets lots of space or er, territory. But Cassidy Bargell read that well. And she's countered a bit. But now it looks like it's a turn up or at least a lot of pressure to break down. <laughs> They've managed to keep hold of it. England were very aggressive at the breakdown against Canada, so we'll expect to see that again today. The number Stay. seven. No hands. All oh, right. Uh, the number seven, uh, Amelia Harper, she was wearing six the other day, was all over the ball. We'll look for her. Well, she's the smallest one in the pack, but she's very, very aggressive. Little fake pass there. We've seen the USA do that a couple of times now as Passiola's faked it. So after the misconversion, the score remains 5 nothing for this English side. First game for England, a successful one versus Canada. They gave Canada all they could handle, although Canada really did come on in the latter stages of that second half and started to kind of assert themselves, which I think sets up a really good rematch on Saturday. Yeah, it certainly did. They grew in confidence after that really uh, rough start, and if they can avoid that slow start they did on, on uh, Friday, then maybe they've got a shot on Saturday, but of course... England will be uh, looking to raise their own performance. Ladies, let's so focus on our spacing at the rock. Contest. Let's give the space, okay? And a few players out there for England will be looking to force their way, uh, way into the starting lineup for that game. Line out for Team USA, handled well there by McKenna Strong as she got lifted high in the air, almost went backwards, but she hang on, hung on to it. And there's a big run by number eight, Tamavena. Finau with the nice run there for Team USA. She wears eight in blue. She should be a prominent player today. Her father actually played rugby for Fiji, similar uh, to Imi, the, to Ima, the fullback for England. Her uncle, uh, Akapusi Nguera, is the captain of Fiji right now. Why don't you practice those names? Because that sounds <laughs> very impressive, Brian. <laughs> it takes, it's taken 20 years to figure out how to read Fijian. <laughs> well, I'll leave the Fijian to you. I'll stick with as much of the English as I can. Although I like to try the tough 13. Games. England picks that ball up. Getting it into the hands of number five, that's Holly Cunningham. Not much of a ruck forms there, and it's picked up quickly. Running with it now, this is Brinkett. She had a good game the other night versus Canada, and it's picked up again. Now they'll use that kicking five. game. That's no surprise. England does it very well, as Lucy Atwood again gains some real estate by booting that ball down the field. USA does a good job of picking it up, as Kinnett had it over there. And that's the other thing England does very well, Brian, is they recover on defense. They transition from the offense no to defense and back very quickly. And they would practice that uh, ad nauseum uh, in training, and there's a big hit by Harper there. Uh, huge pressure on Kennett. She's the uh, the only senior international. Well, I mean, Hingano's played for the Sevens, but uh, but uh, Kayla Kennett, the fullback, she normally plays fly half. She was actually part of the World Cup team that went to Ireland in Numbers 2017. She's also been an international on the seventh circuit, so she'll be a standout. But interesting that they've selected her at, at fullback today as opposed to her normal fly half position. She's a multi-sport athlete, plays basketball, soccer as well. Uh, she tried to dance her way out of trouble there, but the England cover was just too good. Getting hoisted high into the air to get that line out. It was Team England. They did a good job, and now they'll try to form Come a ball here blue. off of that line out. Now it goes to ground, picked up there by Connie Powell. Go ahead. Powell rolls for a minute, but again, England quick to the ball. Yep. Taking a hit there and bouncing off of it was Lange Tuima. Yep. Ball stalled for a minute, but again, England finds a little bit of an opening, moves it forward. Coming in to try to help out was Cunningham. And now they'll work it to the wing. Laughlin. over. USA trying to recover here and regroup on the defensive side of the ball. It's a good job. Good pressure from the USA in defense. They, uh, they realigned well. You can see England were trying to force that overlap as they did earlier, but uh, the USA recognized it. They had plenty of numbers out there, and they stuffed them. So that's a nice uh, psychological win for them. They'll look to clear from here. 
We're about eight minutes into this first half. England getting an early try, and they lead it 5 nothing. The ball's on the ground over there. So this scrum well Coach. to our left. And Find. deep in the USA end of the pitch, probably Set. at about the 14-meter line. USA get that ball out of there. Here's a good run, one stiff arm, almost like a football running back. Timavino, American man. football, that is. No surprise, her brother plays yep. collegiate football, so <laughs> another with good athleticism in her family. They probably hey. practice together, work yeah. stiff arming one another <laughs> in the backyard, perhaps. She's an impressive athlete, plays with the Seattle Saracens. Lots of uh, American internet, the senior men's internationals rather coming from there. Of course, playing with the Seattle Seawolves in Major League Rugby this year. Obviously, rugby is a passion of yours. I know I mentioned it the other day, but uh, you know, let the viewers know the the website that you write for and how they can find it. Right, I'm with uh, America's Rugby News. You can just find that anywhere. AmericasRugbyNews.com, otherwise known as ARN. You can check that one out. We cover the Americas North, South, Central, so plenty of uh, U.S. news on there. Canadian, Argentinian, Brazilian, all that kind of stuff. The Americas Rugby Championship, of course. And Major League Rugby, great to get that off the ground this year. Very exciting uh, development. Hopefully, we'll have a team in Canada next season. Well, and we actually talked to Gino Carew because this, uh, these Tri-Nations games are being held in Nova Scotia. And Gino Carew, we were on earlier because we're also broadcasting the Eastern, Eastern Canadian Rugby Championship. And, uh, Youth rugby in Nova Five. Scotia really starting to grow. They've gotten into the junior high Six. level this year. They also have the rookie ro rookie rugby program. So I think Nova Scotia is starting to catch up to the rest of Canada, and I think Canada is starting to catch up to the rest of the world. Yeah, really a huge amount of momentum here Advantage. in Nova Scotia and, and certainly across the country, and especially in the women's rugby department. We've seen with the uh, with rugby now in the Olympics, there's that attraction. You know, you can go to travel the world on the seven series, play international rugby on the world stage. So it's a it's a it's a great option as far as contact sports go. Um, whereas you know the men's One, maybe we're still battling out. hockey a little bit in this country, but uh, <laughs> It's getting there. We're, we're working. It's a work in progress. So we are a little over 10 minutes into this first half. Still just the one try. So I think given the start that England, and look, every game is different, but given the fast start that England had against Canada, I think the USA right now really hanging tough with the, with the English side, only giving up that one try. England's been pushing a little bit, but USA hanging in there. Yeah, the territory very much going to England, but uh, yeah, give credit to the USA. They're not giving away cheap points, and that's uh, you might say that at the beginning in the first minute of the game, they probably would be disappointed with that score, but they haven't one stoppage nine. Yet, so they've they've bended a little bit. Swimming through that's broken, fine. So if they can stay in here again and maybe force a turnover, get a penalty or something, and clear their lines. Again, it'll be another psychological victory. But at some point, like we saw the other day with Canada, they've got to get out of there and they can't defend all day. Here's a nice move by number 11 on Whoa, team England, Abigail Dow. And Dow ball actually ball. kind of almost took that ball out of her teammates' hands and made a run with it. There's a big collision. Nice tackle there by Tiana Aou for the USA. A lot of physicality out there in the early stages of this one. We've seen some really good collisions out there. USA absolutely bending. Not breaking yet, but there's England, and as I say that, England crawls across and gets their second try. Didn't quite catch the number, but it, we'll see who comes out of the pile I with that ball. I think that's Ellie Mulhern, the three, who's just been, it looks she's getting the pats on the back, so I'm going to assume that's who it was. So we'll wait for the official announcement from the field level uh, public address announcer, but uh, for now we'll say it was Mulhern. And this is the thing about that English team. You know, Team USA was hanging with them, hanging tough. But England, not to be deterred, not to be denied, just kept chugging along, chugging along. And when they see their opening, it's not very often that they get an opening that this English side doesn't capitalize. That's right. They're just going to go through their process. Like we said the other day, you'll see it at the lineouts with their with their driving mall. And here they just weren't getting as much purchase out wide. So they just said, okay, we'll stick it up the jumper and just bash ahead until we get over the line. They're not going to stop us all day. You know, there's only so many tackles they can put in. So it certainly worked. The war of attrition has paid off. Now they've got their second try. See. Ellie Green lining up the conversion. See if she can get it here talking to a couple of the members of 
this English side earlier, said that they had a half day off a couple of days ago, got to go up and spend yeah, some time in the capital time. city of Halifax, Nova Scotia, or the Halifax Regional Municipality, as it's known, a beautiful area. They said they got to spend some time down on the waterfront, strolling along on a beautiful day, got to walk across the sea bridge there. So nice that the uh, English side, as we see that conversion attempt go wide, but nice that they had a chance to just get a little away time from the game and, and to have some just tourist time. Yeah, absolutely. When you're on these kind of tours, you can get kind of uh, sucked into everything. And it's, you know, it gets a little stale if you're doing rugby 24-7. Uh, not everybody's like me and does that kind of thing. So uh, it's nice to get a bit of fresh air, see the sights, and, and really take in the culture and the surroundings of the places you're visiting, really get a feel for it. So that's good. Halifax is a great place in the summer. I'm glad they got a chance to see that down on the, the waterfront. Well, it gives them some familiarization with the city as well because they'll be right back there on Saturday playing against Team Canada in a feature match, 4 o'clock Atlantic time from the Wanderers' grounds. That's going to be a spectacular venue. Hope you join us for that one as well. Meanwhile, just to our left, down on the ground, there was Langi Tuima for Team England. This English side, so good in all facets of the game. Picked off the ground by Wervis. Over on that far side now, England has it again. A couple of quick passes, and they get it to the wing. In on the tackle there was Lauren Tunin for the U.S. Now it's England. Watch their quick passing. So adept at getting that ball from one player to another. Nice offload there. Taken down heavily was Brinkett for Team England, but again, England carries right on. One player gets eliminated. Another one steps in. Nice pursuit by USA getting there. No was Heinrich. But USA now trying to chase again. Relentless right now is this English side. So England well drilled in this phase play. Everybody knows where they've got to be. Stop. There's no wasted effort. Very okay. efficient. And it seems at times that almost every player on the pitch for US, or excuse me, for England touches the ball through their different phases. It's just so many players get a touch when they pass. It's not like there's two or three that focus in in terms of carrying the ball. They have no problem at all going Step. from one side to the other. Almost everybody on the front row anyway gets a touch. Spreading it out, that was Mulhern with the big run, and here's Powell taking it on. Look at her go, oh. rumbling up the field is number two, Connie Powell. Always exciting to see the front row having a go. Here they go again, one pass, two pass, three passes. Becky That's tries to get it off, and she does to Tuima. And it's dropped there, a collective groan from the English supporters in the stands here. And USA will pick it up and try to clear some daylight between their goalpost and the rest of the field. Here's a good run now for the USA to the other side. That's Tiana Aau. Good scramble for the ball there. Ruck forms over the top. Who's got it? Looks like it's England. No, when well, the referee stops play. Want to say hello to Ewan. I know Ewan was tuned in watching the other day. Says that he's watching the game. And he hopes that uh, Leanna Ruth gets some good game time from mom and dad who are out there showing their support. Nice to have you watching. Ewan, what would it be? Just coming up to 11 o'clock. Your time. That's their ball. Yeah. As it is me. just 647 Atlantic Crouch. time here in Wolfville, Nova Scotia. Find. In the beautiful Find. Annapolis Valley. Sit. USA still under pressure here. They'll want to clear their line somehow. Look for some space, find some green, or they're going to run for it. Okay. And here is a good run from Emily Heinrich. She picks up about 15 oh, meters, God. gets it forward. That was a good run right there. They'll pick it up, move it across the line. No five! England recovering quickly. Trying to shut it down, but the USA with a couple of quick passes of their own. Here's a good run. Nice cut up the middle. There's Getting into open field, Hingano. Look at Hingano go. Will not be denied. Can't take her down. And finally, England recovers, but not before Hingano picks up about 30 meters. Great run by number 12 in blue, Mata Hingano. Bring it back her here. Her ball in hand. Why? She's already rated at the senior level. Here comes USA again, feeling confident now after that run by Hingano. Kanet with a run. USA got a little confidence going here. Final Temevena. 
Look at Tamavena uh, all at the way in for the try, and USA has got their first try of the game, and it's Finau Tamavena. That's a great boost of confidence for the United States. They've been pinned in their own end. This is really the first good attacking chance that they've had, and they've taken advantage of it. Tamavina, the powerful run, but also showing a turn of pace for one of the larger players in the pack. That's her Fijian ancestry coming through. That was a great score for them. And now it's just 10-5, so, I mean, that's a one-score game. You'd have to be happy with that, I think, coming up close to the 20-minute mark here for the USA. And you could really see that after that big long run by Hingano that seemed to lift up the rest of her teammates and after that run by Hingano was done the USA just kind of kept going and they end up pushing it in so absolutely here we go we are just about not quite 20 minutes into this first half and the USA with a chance now to pull within three little chip shot just off to the right however USA will take the try USA tries. and they cut Four the lead in half three. That, that's what you want from your captain when you need something uh, inspirational. She breaks the line like that. That's uh, that's why she's <laughs> there. That's why she's the captain. You gotta love that. Leads by example. And you know, there's no discounting the intangibles in any sport. And confidence and energy and emotion are all intangibles. And who knows? You get that big run from Hingano, you get the try from Tamavena, and all of a sudden the USA feels, hey, we can play with this team. And you can just see their shoulders picking up a little, little pick up in their step there. Liz Wilson with a nice run there. And you can see this, they're just running with more confidence now. They're running through the tackles as opposed to being stopped on the line. It's good signs for this American side. So here they again spinning out of the tackle. So England, perhaps with their first real test here of this first half they've seen the u.s come at them a little bit here oh, just but a little mistake there from heinrich she got too excited wanted to go quick and knock the ball on after they'd won a penalty so roughly at the halfway mark Ten. again that's Ten. very unofficial that's my samsung phone time there's no field clock here so obviously the match official that you see in the middle of your screen has uh, full discretion on the timing but i am using you know an unofficial timer brian so i'll do my best to keep you up to date this one needs to be england's been doing well the scrum but not really uh not really throttling uh, usa at all just getting a little bit of an advantage there interesting they were uh, england was meant to play hannah botterman today she's the senior international prop and i was speaking to her before the match she's got a shoulder injury which is why she hasn't played the last couple games she should be back or is hoping to be back rather for the canada game on saturday yeah, she, you saw her earlier over walking the sidelines about 10 or 15 minutes before kickoff, so it would be great to see her back. Hopefully she's in on Saturday, but right now we've got to deal with this game on a Tuesday, and it's England trying to answer back after the USA got their first try of this match. Tawima making nice inroads there. Here's a quick little pass into the hands of Rihanna Manson. And England pushing that pile ahead. They'll pick it up. A couple of quick passes. And there they go to the wing. Almost a knock on there down in the corner. And just losing the handle on it. We've seen that a couple of times, and we should mention, not raining now, but it was very humid earlier. And then mid-afternoon uh, here in Wolfville, so probably about uh, three hours ago, an absolute deluge of rain for about 45 minutes. So the field is probably still a little bit damp, so there's going to probably be a little extra slickness on that ball. Yeah, and you just want to be a little bit sure of, of your passing and that. But we saw that the other night uh, in the heat, a little bit sweaty. Uh, passes weren't quite going to hand. So you just have to be accurate. You've got to make sure you lead your runners and not throw it in behind. A uh, little bit of inaccuracy there from England, Five. and that's a team who will be disappointed with that, kind of, uh, that kind of performance. Six. They'll pride themselves on accuracy. So a little bit of a let up there for England, but that's good news for the Americans here. So Team USA, Hingano had it for a second and then lost it. And you see Hingano slap her hands down to the yeah. ground, not happy with that sequence. Just took her eyes off the ball, looked up at the defense because they were up quickly, and she's just dropped it, giving it right back to England. And now this is a prime attacking position, the attacking scrum just to the left of the uprights. And you can see they're bringing Stoger Goddard in to make the extra attacker. Coach. Let's see how... The USA Fine. responds with defense, a huge blindside open if 
England wants to do some kind of a tricky play around the back. You see the battle physically up front in the trenches in this scrum. Put in by Weir Weirvis. And look at the maul that scrum forward. Holy moly, that was about 10 yards forward. And they just take that scrum and they power it in for the try. Well, just talking about how uh, USA was kind of holding their own in the scrum a little bit. And there they are. They just walked over the line. And Beckett eight. touches it down. You won't get an easier try than that for a number eight. And having only seen them up close and personal the one time, it, it seems that this England side almost, when they decide to, they have another gear that they can go to. Yeah, they don't always go to that gear, but it seems when they need it, they can almost flip a switch and go to it. It's just good to have options, you know. They'll, they'll have worked through different styles if they want to attack wide, as we've seen them do, or, or as we've seen here, they're just keeping it tight and uh, going through, you know, what's really a staple of their game is strong forward play. So, you know, it's just a controlled, uh, controlled decision. They just said, hey, let's just get some points on the board here take command of the game. So we've got Lucy Atwood. She's got a fan, does Lucy, watching back across the pond. And no less than Jess Breach, who is an England international winger herself. <laughs> Her and uh, she'll know Abby Dow as well, very well, scoring plenty of tries for the senior uh, women throughout the Six Nations and the fall. So the convert is good. Good kick from Ellie Green there. So we got a tweet from Jessica Breach saying that she's watching the U-20 girls from England taking on USA, supporting number 9 and number 10, which, of course, Ella Weirvis, number 9, and England Lucy Atwood, who just got the convert, number, number 10, saying that they are gaining their first starts with the English rose emoji right next to it. So thanks for watching, Jessica. Nice to hear from you. Probably feeling a little better now that England has got another try with the convert, extending the lead to 17-5. So USA... Kicking off, taking on the fly there well by England. There's Beckett, the big number eight, smashing a head again. She's carried very well in this game. She also played the other day against Canada. And England charging ahead with that ball again. Rolling down to the ground is Akina Gondway. And now England. Here they come again. With some speed was Phoebe Murray. And there's a lot of players on this English, English side that I could say that statement about with some speed and some power. It's a great tackle by, I think that was Liz Wilson, the number six. Yeah, that was a great <laughs> tackle. And now there's England using that kicking game again. They use it so very effectively. It's actually Lauren Tunin with that tackle. USA now. Nice little dipping, darting move there, like a water buck squirting across the top of water. That was Kayla Kanet. USA now. Quick passes. Again, they fake the pass and then make the cut to the inside. The oh. Americans trying to use their running game a little bit. That was Heinrich. Now they'll pass it over. Connecting with Wilson there. Nice little offload. England caught for offside there. Looks like uh, Wilson is actually down after that contact. I think that's Wilson. Haven't seen a number yet, but it looks like her down. So while we have a moment, we'll step aside, take a break. You're, You're watching the 2018 Tri-Nations Tri Cup, England, England and USA, silver, England ahead, 17-5. We'll be back. From the Patagonian Plains to the Canadian Shield, we are the new face of mining. We're innovators, game changers. We're safe, diverse, and respectful. We're driven. We empower our people to empower our company. We are Gold Coast. Wait for the whistle to go off. Welcome back to Wolfville, Nova Scotia. Looks like everybody is up and okay. 17-5 is your score, and that kick goes out for touch. Here we go. USA will just, uh, we've got an attacking line out here midfield. It's always a good attacking spot, and it, uh, it, might, it looks like they've got Tammy Vina out in the midfield, so I wouldn't be surprised to see her crashing ahead. Here comes USA. 
They've seen England bounce back to get a try with a convert to go up by two. It's a little Olivia Ortiz, the scrum half around the back there. Probably not the person you want to be running into contact off the line out from there. Seven, no hands, not too late. Hold! Ruck forms for just for a moment. USA gets it up. They'll come to this near side. There's three quick passes. And again, you see the USA take that little three, pass step, and make the cut to the inside. That time it was Kinnett again for the U.S. Little bobble there by the number eight, Tamavina. And the U.S. No it over to Team England. Up quickly. Atwood had it for a moment. England a little bit flat here, but... They worked the overlap out in the left with Stoger Goddard there, so that's uh, that's some nice work there. Composed playing that flat. Uh, normally you'd see them a little bit steeper to try and run hard on it, but uh, it looks like they just want to take it laterally and make some space, and it looks like they have the overlap outright if they want it. And behind the play you just see in the center of your frame, couldn't quite catch the number, but there's an American player Going down knock on. and is very much struggling right now. I think that's Freeman, the seven. To get up, I believe you might be right. Morgan Freeman, seven for the U.S., she was trying valiantly to try and crawl her way across the field and just couldn't make it. She's being tended to now and the play over on the far side of the field. So we certainly hope that number there seven ball, for was Team a USA, Morgan attempt, Freeman, is going to be okay. So while we have a second here, kind of a neat moment, actually. We just mentioned moments ago that Sarah Beckett got that try for Team England. Mark. Got a tweet here from Charlie Beckett yeah, he's saying he's loving the coverage tonight. And he says... He swears he's not getting emotional watching his little sis score her first try for England. <laughs> Honest, he says he's not. I don't believe it, Charlie. I think you're a little misty right yeah, now. Yeah, time is off. Well, she's having a good game so far, you'd have to say. Played well against Canada the other day, too. Strong runner. Okay. Of course, that uh, and show good control, really, on those that pushover try. Nice and deliberate, but it's a skill. If, if you've ever played uh, scrum half, you know that it helps to have an experienced number eight who knows how to control the ball at the back. Nothing worse than having a, a pushover scrum and then the ball just squirting out because you've got a flanker or somebody doesn't know what they're doing back there, and then you just wasted the opportunity. So it is a skill. You want someone with experience at the back of the scrum. So there you see Morgan Freeman getting worked on. It appears to be that right foot or right ankle. So... As we're about half an hour into this half, you, are from New Brunswick, you know, you mentioned that you thought England might be a little flat. Could it be anything that you're what you're seeing that the USA might be doing to cause that flatness? In other words, you know, something that they might be doing defensively or any kind of scheme that they're doing? Or do you think this just might be kind of all on England? Well, they are tackling well. Uh, you know, the USA... It, when we saw the first try again, uh, we talked about it earlier. They just uh, the defense wasn't quite ready, and it seems like they've got their organization back a bit. They're talking a bit more. They're coming up the defense. They're making those hits. So that's putting a bit of pressure on England. But again, we've seen the England forwards take route one here for a couple of scores. So it just kind of uh, forces the defense to step back, gets them to check, moves that advantage line forward. So. Now we know what England brings to the table. You know they're a very good side. England, you know rugby as does football uh, in the UK, runs very deep in the bloodlines. But as you cover the Americas, and we're going to get back to play here in a second, but maybe, you know, where is rugby in terms of the Americas? You know, who are some of the powerhouses? Who are some of the up-and-comers? Well, the USA a, is certainly the up-and-comer. I mean, they, the men's side defeated Scotland, uh, and, and the women's side Come actually on. did better than Canada at the, uh, the World Coach. Cup. They placed higher, so uh, certainly on the rise. They Find! Are, the sleeping giant, as we call them in the rugby world. Everybody knows they're so good athletically. It's just a matter of time. Once we get them better exposure, everybody starts picking up the game a bit younger. The handling gets a bit better. The feel for the game becomes more natural. We're going to see another in the well, they bounce, they sevens. Bounce. They're both, you know, top five teams in the world. So uh, I would say uh, the USA are the ones to watch. Argentina, the traditional powerhouses, but only in the men's, not so much in the women's. Canada and the USA are the strongest teams in the women's by a, by a distance. And what a great opportunity for USA and Canada to get to play a quality side like these this England U20 side. Here comes USA. There's tune in again. We figured out her scrum cap now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So a good run there. And this time it's the six. Liz Wilson gets a couple of meters and then taken down. USA not giving up, though. England recovering quickly on defense. And look who it is one Hingano. more time. Hingano, well look at her go. Oh, my, into the open field, down the sideline. Can they catch her by the touchline? Hingano, 
an electrifying 50-meter run, takes it all the way down deep into the England side of the pitch. And Abby Dow did incredibly well to get back and make that tackle, but it looks like the arriving player has been penalized for entering in the side in the tackle. You've got to come from your own side of the ball. So looks like Dale Hall, the referee, is going to have a word here about that. Maybe lucky uh, not to be given a yellow card in a scoring position like that. They're at least getting a warning. Well, I know in American football, yards rushed are a statistic that are kept. I don't know if meters run is a stat that's being kept here, but right now I would say if uh, Mata Hingano for the USA had a Fitbit, it would be running out of battery power because she's run a couple of big runs here. And they are over for the try. The quick tap, I'm pretty sure that was Tamavina, the number eight, who's just powered over there in the corner. You're not going to stop her from close range. All set up by the outstanding run by Hingano. Almost deceiving pace. She just flew through the line and passed everybody around the outside. It almost took Dow by surprise out in the wing. So that's a huge score for the USA. They're right back in the game. They are. And the thing is that you make a really good point about Hingano. She hasn't scored a try, but it's been two really big runs for her that have set up the eventual try on both occasions for Team USA. Tammy Vina is going to owe her... <laughs> a coffee or something after this game. Maybe a hot chocolate. I That's guess not right. in this weather. Maybe an ice cream in this weather. Maybe an iced coffee, perhaps. <laughs> so a pretty sharp-angled conversion try from distance here, and that's going to fall well short. But the United States, they are right back in it here, down by the converted try. And they'll be pleased with that, having spent USA so much time in their the own end. If they can get through to the half, well, they only one score Eddie, down. That's wow. uh That'll be a big psychological win for them. We've talked about a couple big stops for them already in defense, so I would certainly, if I was them, be pleased with that score considering how much, how much territory and uh, possession has been in England's favor. So uh, Again, they, they made the line break and they capitalized, and that's what you want to do. So kudos to them, certainly led by Hingano and Tamivuna, or Tamivina, rather. England on that kickoff, sending it very close to the touchline, but... The United States able to gather it up now, and they'll move it forward. Advantage given there to the U.S. on that sequence. Ball over on that far side. Here's a quick pass to Arena. Destiny Arena tries to get a little space forward. Now she'll get it back. Picked off the ground. It's 13, pass over. Never on. Another one. Now they'll turn it upfield. Good tackle there by Lange Tuima for England. 13 in white with the great tackle. But USA keeps coming forward. There's that fake pass and then the cut up again. Not the first time we've seen Kayla Kinnett do that. 15 in blue for USA. She likes to fake the pass and then make the cut up field. Trying to charge out some meters there was Tiana Aou. She's the one for this USA side. Here's another good run. The USA again coming at England right now. So... The USA, right now anyway, doing to this English side what you usually see England do to their opponent. Pass the O's with a nice break, but well, England was quickest to the breakdown. They won the turnover. They did that a lot against Canada. USA has just got to be better in support. Yes! Especially when your number 10 goes for a run like that. You've got to be right on, right on her heels. Akina Gondwe had it for a moment and then passed it off. And now it's intercepted, turned over. Grabbing that ball is McKenna Strong for Team USA. And running away with it there was Tunin, but the play whistled down before Tunin could get too far. Kenna Strong plays for Lindenwood, national champions in both 7s and 15s. She's an interesting player. If I remember correctly, she actually has played a bit of rugby in the midfield as a back, and she played in the forwards and 7s, and they like what they, what they saw of her and with her size. They're taking a look at, at her up front. Brings good athleticism. You can see her hands there, so... Interesting player for the, uh, One, let's work for the hard Americans. To stay on, okay? We saw that with uh, Canada as well. They had Mackenzie Carson, a Carson. half normally playing at hooker. So Find. they know what position they're going to play moving up into the Set. senior level. So we're going to have to uh, make a quick check of our English lineup. I know the mat sheet that I was handed by Rugby Canada has some certain players listed at certain numbers that don't match up with uh, what was provided from the English side, so we'll confirm that. And look again. Oh, my goodness. Could it be this time she takes it herself and goes all the way? And Hungano, holy cow, has she run a country mile and then some in this game. 
and she's got Team USA within two. What can you say about the captain of this United States team, Mata Hingano? She's having an absolute storm. <laughs> Another outside break shows her pace. That is just an incredible, incredible run again. And you think by now the English defense would figure out that she's the danger runner, but it doesn't seem to matter. She's fending off defenders. She's spinning out of tackles. She's showing her pace. Just sensational work by her. And wow, the coaching staff has got to be pleased with what they're seeing from the captain and the team. I mean, you can just see them just, you know, getting a shot of water here while uh, Heinrich lines up this kick. They all, uh, the shoulders are up, the chins are up. They've got to be uh, ecstatic to be. I mean, if this kick goes over, they're all level at 17. To tie, it's up, it's over, and it's good, and we are tied. Good. Don't go anywhere. Don't Not much that. time left in this half, and the United States, their U-20 squad, has come out here and put on a great performance against a very talented and deep U-20 English side. And we are tied up 17-all. And it's been a team effort for USA, but my goodness, right now it's almost like the captain, Madame Hingano, said, hop on my back and let's uh, follow me and see what happens. Absolutely incredible. You wouldn't have guessed that after seeing that quick try to England one minute into the game. But boy, have they rebounded and the inspirational play of Hingano. A couple uh, big runs, two tries for Tamavina. Uh, that's, uh, you've got to be happy if you're the Americans crew to be watching this and, and really almost their defense has to get a pat on the back you know they've let in three tries but they defended well they haven't given away cheap points England's had to work for it aside from that early score let's make sure we're waiting for the set call from them. certainly uh, you know before the game kind of looked like or thought that England would be a, a heavy advantage in this one judging by the scores the other two days but that has not been the case at all. It was a very, very competitive match. And it Find. <laughs> to go in level at the break, and they got to feel good about maybe getting a win out of this if they can keep this up. Well, if they've shown anything and if they've told themselves something, it's that, yeah, you know what? We can play with this English side. And now England, I'm sure, might be a little frustrated, but also might have a little chip on their shoulder thinking, Set. what is going on here? We should not be even up with this side. See Phoebe Murray, the English captain, getting in on it now. She's probably looking over at Hingano and saying, I need to pick up my game. I need to inspire my troops. So almost, well, that was a knock-on, I think, as Rihanna Manson kind of bobbled it there. And again, worth mentioning, uh, wet conditions on the grass from the rain we had earlier, kind of humid conditions here. So with the sweat from the players and the humidity and, and water on the field, that ball probably going to have moments where it's a little bit slick. So there's a long advantage played from Dale Hall at the scrum. Uh, the USA just popping up. It looked like the number one, uh, Tiana Au, uh, and just giving uh, England a chance to attack before awarding the penalty. Um, yeah, you know, uh, it, it might be a little slick out there, but when you get a pass in the hands like that, there's no excuse to drop it at this level. That's just, uh, you know, a lack of concentration for a moment, taking the eyes off the ball, and you just got to remember when it is a little bit slick, look at the ball, make sure you catch the ball before you think about passing it and moving it on. So one step at a time. Line out here for England, taken very well by the English side, and they'll try to get a mall going now and see if they can push that ball down the field. Six blue, come on! And their physicality up front. And they do indeed get a mall to form. Now it goes down to ground. They say had no option there. They had to bring that down or it was going to be a try. And they might get one anyways. Powell coming very close. So by my unofficial count, we're coming up to the 42-minute mark of this first half. And down in the corner. There it is. Beckett with her second try of the game. Huh? Well, her brother will be happy oh, seeing that. Oh, he will be <laughs> in tears. The waterworks are happening right now across the pond. And that is indeed... Number two for Beckett and England back in front. A very late try here in this first half, and England pops back into the lead. There you see in the middle of your screen, that's number 10, Ellie Green. Once again, England's forwards just getting the job done, just saying, hey, give us the ball. We'll, uh, we'll make this happen. You guys, you know, we're not getting much going on out wide, so... We know we've got an advantage up front. Go through uh, the motions, easy line out drive. It gets collapsed and uh, instead of taking the points, they just uh, take the quick tap, Beckett's in in the corner. Hard work from the forwards. Uh, they are definitely uh, dominating this game for England and they'll just want to sort out their backs probably and definitely the midfield defense. They'll have a chat about dealing with Hingano and the, the impact that she's made. 
And I wish I had some music to go with that little two-step that Eleanor Green does before she lines up this kick. Everyone's got their little thing they do, right, to get them in the zone before they uh, make a kick. So Green lines it up, takes a deep breath, looking to extend the lead to seven. Kick is up. Yeah, Lots of height. Looks good. And that's a pretty nice conversion attempt from that distance and angle that's right not, there for lovely, Ellie Green. Lovely strike from Ellie Green. Of course, England uh, known for producing world-class kickers. We saw it with Harrison England the other day. Eight, of course, Johnny Wilkinson, the uh, most famous Sarah English Beckett rugby player you'd have to say of all time. Well, it looks like 10, Jesse Breach pretty happy with the efforts from uh, the English England player Beckett. Sarah's got a couple. Breach is happy. Her brother's happy. It's a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, England will be happy to get that score right before the half. That's a pickup for them. They would have been disappointed to give up uh, three tries and be level. They wouldn't. They wouldn't be at all Fans, happy to head into the score pocket, level. So, getting that last minute try, that's a big boost for them. A little, uh, little we've shot to the USA, the reminding them, hey, we've got very we strong got forwards. We're just going to take this over, and there's nothing you can do about it. So one half in the books. It was a great one. If that's an, if that's any indication, don't go anywhere. The second half. Just a few minutes away, Scott Squires, Brian Ray, and our rest, the rest of our broadcast team will have the second half for you in just a little bit. We're going to step aside, take a break. One half in the books, England leading USA in this Tri-Nations Cup game. It's 24-17 for England. We'll be back. Patagonian Plains to the Canadian Shield. We are the new face of mining. We're innovators and game changers. We're safe, diverse, and respectful. We're driven. We empower our people to power our company. We are Gold Corp. This broadcast proudly brought to you by Gold Corp, official partner of Rugby Canada's national women's programs. DHL, official logistics partner of Rugby Canada. And by Canterbury, official kit partner of Rugby Canada. This broadcast proudly brought to you by Gold Corp, official partner of Rugby Canada's national women's programs. DHL, official logistics partner of Rugby Canada. And by Canterbury, official kit partner of Rugby Canada. Canadian Plains to the Canadian Shield. We are the new face of mining. We're innovators and game changers. We're safe, diverse, and respectful. We're driven. We empower our people to power our company. We are Gold Corp. From the Patagonian Plains to the Canadian Shield, we are the new face of mining. We're innovators and game changers. We're safe, diverse, and respectful. We're driven. We empower our people to power our company. We are Gold Corp.
And we are underway in the second half of this Tri-Nations Cup matchup between the United States U-20 side and the U-20 women from England. So England now going left to right on your screen. The USA right to left. I'm Scott Squires. Brian Ray is my broadcast partner. And Brian, now, I guess the first few minutes here of this second half could tell the tale. Yeah, we'll see if the uh, if the England can score a quick try here. That's going to be a, a big blow to the USA. So they'll want to hold out, but that's a mistake there. White, it looks white, like uh, the kick just went straight to touch. Almost took us out over here at the broadcast Blue. booth. Up there, Mark. So this is a good attacking position for the USA. Line out just around halfway. They want to get quick ball and maybe send Tammy Voon up the middle. So here's Destiny Arena. Tapped over there nicely by Tunin. With her, with her. That ball right on the midfield stripe, and USA work it the other way. They get into the hands of Tamavina. A lovely give and go there with Freeman. Connection from the flanker in her number eight. USA would love to get a quick start here. Here's Kanet. She's been loving that fake pass and then turn it up the field. 15 in blue. Keep an eye on when she does that. Kanet. But now it's the USA coming up field. Nice to see number seven Morgan Freeman back in the game. She left earlier with a bit of an ankle issue, but she had it attended to, oh, and she's right back out there for Team USA. See Tamavina loitering out here in the left wing. If they can get the ball to her, she could do some damage. So it's a seven-point lead for England. Certainly this game, lots to be decided in this one. The U.S. have shown that they can battle back, but England has shown that they can absorb the push from the USA and come back themselves. So one of the things I love to do in team sports is use the boxing analogy. It's like two fighters in the middle of the ring just exchanging blows. And one hits one, the other kind of bounces back and comes back with a big blow of their own. And that's kind of what we've been seeing here. The England, England comes out, throws their best shot. USA has absorbed it and come back themselves. So very interesting to see how this is going to play out here in this second half. Yeah, that's a nice counter repost from England. They win the ball to turnover. And just use that nice kicking game to put it in behind the American defense. Get it out of, yeah, yeah. Out of jail. Yeah. Get it beyond halfway. Uh, just around halfway, actually, looking at it now. But they were under pressure, definitely. And uh, the USA looking to score, but they just lost the ball at the breakdown. And they, we saw that in the first half. England, again, very strong in the, in the tackle area. Off the set piece, it was tapped over there by Wilson out of that line out. And now they come right towards us. Here's a pass over. And look who it is, Kanet. Offloads there. Nice pass into Bargell. Ball down on the ground. Ruck forms over top. Who comes out with it? Well, it's Hingano. Hingano was electrifying running the ball in that first half. Two big runs set up two tries, and then she scored one herself. Ellie Green just nearly got the turnover there. She was quick over the ball. Tiana Aau charges forward with a couple of meters. And the you, US I know, but you're off the ball over the to contest. England, but the referee blows the whistle. Looks like Mulhern pinged for going down off her feet under her hands, so you've got to stay on your feet. You can't uh, go hands first and then onto the ball if you're trying to get a turnover. That's what the referee is signaling there. Kanet will look to gain some territory. Oh, she squibbed that one a bit. A couple of players clash together on the ground. Mm -hmm. The English player kind of awkward with the shoulder stuck out, and that was number eight, Sarah Beckett. So we'll keep an eye on Beckett. As you could see in that pile, her arm was kind of outreached, and her shoulder was kind of twisted a little bit. And as soon as the pile came off of her, you see her right there. She kind of rolled over and was tended to right away and certainly seems to be favoring perhaps that right arm or shoulder area. Don't want to... Again, never like to speculate on an injury, but that would appear to be what uh, Beckett is favoring right there. She's got a couple of tries in the game. She's got her brother near tears over in England, but right now the concern is is that her shoulder is going to be okay. So they're going to work on number eight, Sarah Beckett. It's 24-17 England over USA in the second half. We'll be back. Patagonian Plains to the Canadian Shield. We are the new face of mining. We're innovators, game changers. We're safe, diverse, and respectful. We're driven. We empower our people to power our company. We are Gold Corp. We are back. They've tended to 
number eight for England, Sarah Beckett. And we will carry on. Still favoring that shoulder a bit. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, she comes off the pitch, uh, or the pitch rather, sooner than, than, than later. They'll want to keep her uh, in good shape for the game against Canada on Saturday. No reason to, to keep her in the game if she's hurting a bit. Yeah, they may just keep her out as a precaution. She's certainly having a whale of a game so far for England. They lead by seven as kind of a stalemate. Now it's USA having to chase down number 14 for England. That's Abby Dow. Yeah. Good tackle, but uh, the USA just didn't roll away fast enough uh, for the liking of the referee, so preventing England to get quick ball. Caught it. Interception for Tamavina out the wing. Tamavina, tough to bring down, drags a couple of tacklers with her. Gets the ball back to the scrum half, Olivia Ortiz. Now a couple of quick passes, that's bobbled, but it goes behind so USA can carry on. England tries to recover quickly defensively. Well, England probably, or the USA rather, probably lucky not to have that called a, a knock on, but instead it's a penalty for holding on at the breakdown. Again, England, they're so fast over the ball and their positioning is so good, they figured that one out. And uh, yeah, USA's just got to get quicker, uh, get to the breakdown quicker. They've got to be first to the ball, and that's something Canada will want to do on Saturday at Wanderers Grounds. They weren't uh, very good at that the last game we saw them against England. They were getting beaten to their own ball, and that's not what you want to have happen. So we've had that happen uh, probably about three times already for the USA in this game. So they want to just get their support there a bit quicker. Well, it's going to be interesting to see who scores first in this second half. Team England Scored very late in the first half to take the lead, 24-17. So I'm sure the United States is thinking, hey, let's get a score here. Let's get the first score of this second half. Let's get a little closer and keep the pressure on where England is, I'm sure, thinking, hey, if we can get the first score here, that's going to get the USA thinking about things. And look at England pushing very close down to that goal line. And the referee signaling. So he's just walking out of our frame there, but he blew the play down just as England was pushing close to that goal line. Yeah, Holly Cunningham, the line-out target. She's been a frequent target in there. And then Connie Powell just got over the line but couldn't get the ball down. It was held up, so this will be a five-meter scrum to England. England again showing their superiority up front. And now he's having a word talking about, uh, looks like he's talking about offside to the uh, to the Americans, but I didn't see a penalty. Is he calling a penalty for, for offside? I didn't see that as the initial signal. It just looked like it was held up and it was a scrum. And that, uh, no, it's a penalty. So they must have been caught offside at the line out. But they're going to opt for the scrum anyway. Same result. And uh, I dare say they will try to go for the pushover. I will be surprised if they don't. The way it was so easy they did it the last time when, when Beckett scored. So uh, I think that's what we'll see here from the five meters. Yeah, the last time they had a situation like this, it was that other gear that I talked about that England seems to be able to get to from time to time. See if they can find that other gear here in this situation. That scrum starts to wheel around and break down, and the referee calls it immediately. So the USA getting the push on, but he's calling number one, Tiana Aau, for driving across the front row and not straight, and she's getting a yellow card for that. Oh, okay, that's a. Uh, so it seems a little bit hasty for me. It's the first scrum penalty. Well, they got one for popping up back earlier, but uh, from that position, I guess he's just decided that that was deliberate, stopping them from uh, from driving forward. So immediate in a scoring position, a yellow card given away. So Tiana Ao will head to the sin bin. So off she goes. So now. A player advantage for Team England, as you see Aau heading over to the sin bin. They'll be gone for 10 minutes, so a pretty big loss up front there for the United States as number one, Tiana Aau, gets the yellow card, and she's has to cool her heels for the next 10 minutes. And instead of bringing in a replacement front row, it looks like they've moved Tamavina up to loose head prop. Normally you would see a specialist front row come on, but I guess she's played a bit of front row, so she'll slot in there instead, and you don't really want your your strong running number eight to be sucked into the front row like that, but you got to do what you got to do. And, wow, it almost looked like they won one against the head there, down, down a player, but no, the ball's come out, so it'll be another scrum to England. 
So play kind of bogged down here over on that far side of the field for the last few minutes. England, I'm sure, chomping at the bit just to get that ball in and to try to push that scrum the final five meters and get it in for another try. They were successful doing it in the first half. Let's see what happens here. That's, look how low that scrum is. My goodness, they're almost just hovering on the ground. They could almost lean down and bite the grass. And there's the push. There's the push. Trying to get it over. And he's under the post. That's going to be a penalty try, and that's the correct call. They were clearly the dominant scrum, and the USA just collapsed under pressure. There's nothing they could do with only seven players in there, and they had their, you know, Tamavina moving up to prop to fill in there. And, uh, you know, that's just, again, England just flexing their muscles at the scrum, saying, hey, we're the forwards. We're going to get this job done. The backs, you can hang out and count the dandelions in the grass. We're going <laughs> to take this home ourselves. So that's seven points. They don't even have to kick the conversion. That's an automatic seven up. That change has just come in, I guess, in the last year or so where they used to be able to, you would have to kick the conversion after a penalty try, but they've decided that if they're going to give the penalty try, they might as well give you the full seven just to make it more of a deterrent. So a call like that, because it is such a pivotal call where you get the automatic seven, is that a pretty cut-and-dried rule, or, or, or is there a lot of discretion Penalty depending on who the official is? Well, there is discretion, but in that particular case, that's absolutely the, the right now, call. Uh, USA under pressure. They've already Team conceded England. a yellow card in the scrum just before that, and a warning earlier, the uh, the first uh, try by Beckett and the pushover in the first half. So uh, no option there, really. Uh, you know, As much as there is discretion, a uh, referee at this level is just going to go straight on the post all day on that kind of a call. So we talked about the importance of the first score in this second half. It goes to the team in the lead. It goes to England. And now the lead, all of a sudden, has extended to 14 at 31-17. So now the United States. A little bit of gut check time for Team USA. And this kick looking to go out to touch. Trying to keep it in. And she does. Didn't go quite far enough as Kinetti gets there. And makes a nice catch. But then it's turned right back over. And England, well, they'll if at first you don't succeed... Try, try again, and they get it out for touch. And great to see some of the rookie rugby players here. I mentioned earlier, rookie rugby taking hold Two here in Nova Scotia. Two and four blue substitutions. Quite a few of the rookie rugby players retrieving balls along the sideline, so that's good to see. The sooner you get them in the game, the better. Handling is really uh, the toughest thing to get a, a grips on uh, in North America. They're just not used to making uh, decision-making and, and handling the ball. And, uh, too much no, thinking no, going no, in passing. So the, if we get them in the game Ali earlier and Bromstein. get their, their feel on the ball, and that becomes natural. It just bodes well for the future. That's a very the large gap. Are you happy with that? So a couple of substitutions for Team USA. Ellie Fromstein comes in, number 16 in blue, as well as Samantha Tangretti, James. number 19. So a couple of fresh players out here for Team USA. Yeah, that's a smart move when they're down a forward. They just get a little fresh legs because they'll want to hold out here. Two scores you can manage, but if it gets to three scores, then uh, that'll pretty much be it for England. So the USA really wants to score next. Oh, to seven. do that, they've got to hold out while still playing uh, one down with Aau in the bin. That's right. U.S. down a player as Tiana Aau was given the penalty. The yellow card, and look oh, at this. Tamavena into the open field. Eight is rumbling, carrying players with her. Down so close to the goal line, and the referee right there says, no, not in. But what a run by Finau Tamavena. Holy cow. She broke into the open field and scampered a good 40 to 50 meters. Well, that was an incredible break. I don't know what the English defense was doing. It was broad daylight in the midfield, streaming down the pitch. Amazing that she was stopped. That's incredible defense. Tuima was in there with the tackle. Then they got the turnover on the game line. Huge defensive play for England. That's a game-changing defensive play. If they'd scored there, they're right back in the game immediately. So disappointing for the USA. They don't get the try. Huge play for England, but uh, they're still under pressure, still in their zone. So they'll be looking to clear here. You would expect... Uh, Kanet to drop back, and Alexandria Cedric also maybe drop towards the line here. And you're absolutely right. A huge defensive stand. Sometimes when you think of rugby, you don't think about a defensive play like that being a game changer. But you're right. After England had just gotten the penalty try for 
Tama Vena to make that kind of run. And for a moment, it looked like she was just going to have nowhere to go but the end zone. But great pursuit from behind, first of all. And then to be able to hold her up at the goal line and then get that ball turned over. Kind of Tremendous sequence there. That she didn't score, to be honest. I thought she was in for all money. But England has brought in the cover here. Looks like they brought in a whole new front row. I think it was Bartlett, Perry, and Harper all on. Uh, just trying to get the numbers. Yeah, yeah, we've got, Pardon? we've got uh, Bartlett and and Detisha Harper certainly on. Just trying to see if we've got uh, Elena Perry on as well. I was for me the timing was okay. I think though. that's the whole front row that they've they've switched out. So fresh legs on both sides now. Yeah, you can see it out. It certainly is. It's the whole front row. So unofficially, about 15 minutes into this second half, England scored the only try in this half. It was a penalty try. They just stopped USA literally almost right on the goal line after a huge run by Finau Tamavina. So England with some offense, England with some defense, and right now England with the 14-point lead. Ortiz again showing her toughness, taking down. I mean, she's the smallest player on the pitch, really. You don't want her taking in the ball into contact too much, and that, that's also what happens. When your scrum half gets sucked in like that and your forwards are trying to make a scrum half pass, then you've given it away. That happens so much. As a coach, that would drive me nuts. What you wanted to do is just take the ball back on, reset, and let Ortiz get back out so she can give good, good service to her back line. So I think for a moment there I did see the number eight of Sarah Beckett out there for England. I'll have to wait and confirm and she's that. She's still there, yeah. So that's good to see that she's still out there on the field. She went down a little while ago with what appeared to be a right arm or shoulder injury, but eight in white, Sarah Beckett back out there. So that is very good to see indeed. She's had a whale of a game for this English side. And there's a terrific kick from Ellie Green, just putting pressure on the USA, pinning them back in their own end. That's not where they want to be. They want to get back into England's territory so they can get on the board. But again, they're, they're still, uh, they should be close to, to uh, killing off this uh, yellow card. And actually, it looks like uh, they're making subs now. I'm not quite sure if there's any time left on this yellow card. It should be up pretty soon if it's not already. So it looks like Natalie Gray coming in for USA. Heading out is Morgan Freeman. Hard to see who the players coming on and off are. They don't have any kind of digital signage or anything that gives you those subs coming in and out. Oh, we can see... Uh, I was still in the uh, the the naughty chair, the sin bin over there. I can see her now. So yeah, <laughs> the she's naughty still chair. there, hanging out with the fourth officials. She is. She's sitting over there. She looks so lonely. I know you can't see her on your camera shot, but just to our left, over on that far side, there's a yellow tent set up with <laughs> Tiana Aau just kind of sitting there, looking so forlorn, all by herself. Shouldn't be too much longer before she's back into the game. And I think USA could certainly use not only Ao, but just having the extra body back out there. Hard enough to keep up with England when you got a full side. 31-17 is your score. Tamavina now switching to tight head prop. That's never an easy thing to do to play both sides of the front row. For those wondering, it looks like uh, you know they're similar positions, but they're actually quite uh, quite okay. different. The pressure is sure, different. I when you're on the tight head up. side, the right head, the right side of the scrum, you've got two players pushing on you. Whereas when you're on the loose head side on the left, you've only got one to deal with. So the pressure is a bit different. Uh, it, it's a, it's quite a technical thing. As as you move higher up the ranks, it becomes uh, quite rare actually to see players at the high levels uh, playing both sides of the front row. So here's the scrum. And starts to wheel to one side. England really seemed to get the upper hand on the front row of that. Again, showing their technical superiority at the scrum, just driving the USA off the ball, winning the penalty. England's forwards just uh, taking hold of this game. They've decided that they've had it. They're going to make their uh, statement right now. Ellie Green looks at the corner. They'll look to try and drive this uh, line out again, just put together a mall, try and win a penalty, if not uh, a try. So the bulk of the scoring in this game was done in the first half. It was 24-17 at the end of the first half. And 31-17 the score now. So just seven points have been scored here through almost 20 minutes of this second half. So it's been certainly more low, more, more low scoring. But to your point, it seems now that the front line of England almost has decided that they're not going to give the USA any kind of uh, further 
advantage or opportunity to get back in this game. England into the game, number 22, Victoria Laughlin. Laughlin has replaced Delia Green, so Laughlin moves to fullback. We've got Lucy Atwood stepping into fly half, Phoebe Murray and Lange Tuima now in the midfield. Still a very dangerous back line for England, but they haven't seen a lot of ball. They just haven't, uh, uh, they haven't been able to penetrate that uh, American defensive line. Aside from that first try out wide, it's been all on the forward, so we'll see if they get a little bit more action now. So, Otis puts that ball in, gets it right back. Quick pass over. They've got a little bit of overlap on this left side, but they can't get any way to get it there. And England recognizes it now and comes over and marks those players on that left side. Here's a nice offload. USA looking for somewhere to go with it, spinning around yeah, there. That was number 14, Bargell. Ortiz picks it up. Bit of a bobble there, but it goes right into the hands of Passiolis. Bit of a lucky break there for USA. Squirting through there. I guess the ball was loose. Well, it might have been kicked out of the uh, the ruck, which would have been illegal, but no, it was loose and it's been kicked through the end zone, so this will be a 22, I believe, is being signaled. A bit of a stunned look at everybody's face here. What's the call? It is a 22. I'm not so sure what they Make sure we're onside, oh. winger! Winger! Interesting. So trying to kick oh, it wow. forward was Kanet, but it was blocked down. She gets it right back. Good tackle there by Rihanna Manson for one. England. Big physical hit there by four and white. Now picking it up, this is Tunin. Tunin tries to cut up field, but again, that English defense so staunch. First person. And ripping it away was Harper for England. Yeah, it's an excellent turnover, and this, is, uh, this could be points pretty quickly. England again showing their aggressiveness at the breakdown. Harper's been a standout again today. Oh, Going nice for ball. the corner and in for the try, much to the delight of the English fans. England on the board again. Lucy Atwood through for the try. Just skating through the line. We it's saw Harrison do that the other day against Canada. Uh, the USA just not quite uh, drifting across and taking her and leaving a gap in the midfield. And it, when you're that close to the line, you just got to take the ball runner. You can't let her run free like that. She's gone in free pass, untouched for the score. Nice score for her as she just switched into fly half. And that's her saying, hey, uh, forwards, us backs can get some points out here too. It's not all you today. Well, this is the tricky thing when you're playing England is that they're not one or two dimensional they are truly multi-dimensional offensively and defensively you shut one or two players down there's going to be a couple of more on the field that are going to fill in then when it gets into their substitutions the players they bring on are equally adept at giving nightmares to the opponent oh yeah they've got player depth and they're showing that today we saw ellie green she was a replacement the other day uh, against canada at fly half and here she was starting today she had a, a very good game Atwood's kick doesn't go, but to England now England firmly in control, 36 to 17 the score. And uh, you know, we, we said the USA Lucy don't want to go three Atwood. scores down. Well, here they are, so Conversion really now it's do or die. If they get on the, they have to get on the, on the, on the board next to have any hope in this one. I got on my blind side. The sin bin is over, so they're back at full strength. They're gonna try and regather on this restart and get something out of this. Well, the United States has certainly played a very good game here, but that's the thing with this English side. You hang with them and hang with them and hang with them, and then all of a sudden you look up and you're trailing by 19 points. Uh, USA not rolling again. There's a big tackle there by Heinrich, in the, uh, and it looked like she hit uh, Tuima with a hard tackle, but then she didn't get out of the way. And when you're on the wrong side and you don't roll away quick enough, you're slowing England balls down, England's ball down, and you're going to get penalized, and that's what happened there. And that kick goes out for touch, so that'll move the ball down deep once again in the United States side of the field. I'm Scott Squires, Brian Ray, my broadcast partner. My Twitter handle is Scott FFM, as in Firm Foundation Media. I'd love to hear from you. I know we've been having some great interaction with some of the English fans, but. You know, you don't even have to wait while a game is on. You can tweet me afterwards. We're going to be here all week doing the Eastern Canadian Rugby Championships on this very same live stream link. So if you enjoy rugby in general, you can watch rugby all week long. 
And, of course, our next international game, it's going to be a really exciting match. It's a rematch of Canada oh, and it'll be this Again. Saturday at 4 p.m. Atlantic time from the Wanderers Ground, right in the heart of beautiful Halifax, Nova Scotia. So we're glad to have you with us here for this broadcast. And, Brian, you know, we're past the halfway point of this half, but this has been a very entertaining fixture. It really has. You know, England... Uh, they, they came up really fast, but then uh, the USA, led by their captain, Hingano, got right back into it. We were all score, uh, all level uh, on sorry, at, uh, at halftime. And, uh, you know, England's just kind of uh, taking the bit by the teeth up front and dominated this one. Uh, Rosie Galligan is on your right chest breach. I saw uh, number four, Rihanna Manson, going off just at the kick. Looked like uh, a little bit of a blood injury. She was uh, holding... Uh, some padding up to her head, so hopefully she's all right. So Rosie Galligan wearing 19 on in the second row for England. I'll tell you what, I don't know many more staunch supporters of English rugby than Jessica Breach. As you mentioned, she plays for the 15s and the 7s in England. I like the other name of her club team, the Harlequins. Oh, yeah. That's a great name. <laughs> That's why she'd be cheering for her club mate, Ellie Green, early in the game. Oh, we see Abby Dow, her fellow England international winger, going off now. That'll be Jessica Cooksey coming on as a replacement. Um, the game. Yeah, Jess Breach has almost been our sideline uh, reporter Cooksey. today from afar. So thanks, Jess. Find. Get yeah, off her head, great. White. Certainly her and uh, Charlie Six. Beckett, who is, uh, we mentioned earlier, the brother of Sarah Beckett. He's been kind of cheerleading on out. the sides. You can only assume that is Charlie Beckett, the professional rugby player over there. Another second row. Yeah, typically when you see it, it runs in the bloodlines, kind of like hockey in Canada. Quite often families become hockey-playing families with brothers and sisters playing the game. Where Much the same for football and rugby. Let's go there! That ball pops free, Let's carried forward there. We're going to knock Higano. on before the advantage she over. Hasn't been as much of a factor in this half, and I don't know if that's just the flow of the game or anything uh, that no. Team England has done differently to kind of shut Hingano down. But certainly she hasn't had the effect in this half that she had Number in the first. Eight, well, England just controlling form. the ball already. Right. And when you control position, it is a you two of those. You take two in the row for him. That, and the opportunities that the USA are getting are on the back foot. They're not on the front foot, aside from that one little attack earlier. But, uh, you know, England just taking the wind out of USA grinding them out with the forwards, and it just, uh, you know, it wears everybody down. And you can see they, they're just looking a little bit sluggish now heading into the, or now well into, I guess I should say, the final quarter here. Uh, it is humid out there, so it's uh, oh, be tested for sure. England looks just to be a little bit fresher at the moment. Right around midfield. Here comes England. There you see the quick passes. They're good at this. Done, done, done. They can move it quickly one side to the other. Passes back and forth all over the field. Laughlin had it there for a minute. Offside. So offside. It was a kick though. There. That's it. 11. Offside. Well, Off the kick. Uh, unfortunate one there, but England uh, will take full advantage of this. Atwood will kick to the corner. You can bet we'll see a line out drive coming here. They've been doing it all day. That's a very good kick from that one. That is indeed. So that line out will be very deep in the United States end of the pitch, and it'll be just to our right. So we'll have a great view of this line out, Brian. See who they look to. They've been looking for Cunningham all day, the number five. What? And it looks like... Uh, that's Galligan is going to go up for it. And she gets it, and there's the ball. Now watch them push it. Galligan almost a cheerleader as they, she's facing back and towards her mates. That's a great shot right there. Look at Galligan. She's just telling her mates, come on, push me in, push me in. And look at England just controlling this ball. United States doing everything they can, but just not able to stop the momentum. And there it is. Almost as if they drew it up on a chalkboard. There it is. Kara Brinkett with the score. And then again, just walking over the line. It doesn't matter how fast you get there. It's just about keeping that momentum as they showed to perfection there. That'll put a smile on their face. Job well done. Well, I mean, you can tell just how much this team practices set pieces and phases like we just saw and it was just so interesting because it was Rosie Galligan as you said who got went up to receive that line out Ooh, I don't and then when she came down she had her back to the goal that. line she was facing her mates who were pushing yeah. that line forward 
the next shoot them. You can see her yelling at them, urging her mates to keep pushing them to the line. And once they got down close, I mean, I don't know how you stop this English side. Yeah, there's nothing you can do from there. The only thing you're going to do is collapse and give away a penalty try. So it's, you know, take your pick. That would have a shot here with their trusty left boot. So Lucy Atwood has a pretty good look at it. That looks like oh. it's going to be right up, right through. Two more. That's a pretty good kick right there. Another beautiful strike. And there's a, a, a real difference. You talked about it earlier, the kicking strength of the England size that we've seen here. Uh, you just don't have that uh, you have in this side? North America. It's I so think they're going to kick over there, really but good. we have all eyes. We haven't seen it with Canada. We haven't seen it today with the USA. And uh, England showing what a potent weapon it is. They've picked the corners. Conversions have been uh, well struck. It's, uh, it's a big advantage. It's something that North America really has to work on. It should be better. Maybe it's a strong uh, football or soccer culture, as we call it here, as part of the UK, that uh, they had these strong kickers. But certainly Atwood showing that she can kick the ball as well as Ellie Green and Zoe Harris. A very nice strike there. This is Samantha Tangretti now checking into the game for the USA as well. Number 22, Sydney Cherkinski. But it's interesting, after the game the other night with uh, England and Canada, there was actually an English fan that uh, tweeted me and made a really, you know, uh, ob a really outside! observation. Outside! He said, his basic comment was, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he said, you know, really one of the big differences is that Canada couldn't match England in the kicking game. Right, and, and when you're... You know, when you don't have that weapon, then you're, you know, the other team can dictate where the game is played. If they want to kick it deep and send you back in your own zone, they can do that. And if you can't respond, then you're forced to run. And that's, you know, that's easy pickings for the defense. They can just uh, stand there, set up their line, and attack the tackle area, which is what England have done so well. You see it again it's today. Against the USA. Harper and the Sanders are all over the ball. Uh, just as a team, they're very good at it. Taking a couple penalties, but as a coach, you're not going to be upset by a couple penalties if you're winning four and five turnovers a game at the breakdown. So Canada will be wary of that heading into Saturday. They'll certainly go over this game tape again, but they already know what's coming. They've seen them on Friday. We're very late in the second half. England has pulled away here, scoring 19 points after actually much of this second half had gone scoreless for quite a while. But since then, England has oh, just this other notch that they've been able to uh, rise to. And the USA just has not been able to match the effort. Not for lack of trying, as we see a big collision there right in the middle of it. Not it was blue. Not 15. Not for on white. That was uh, Lange to Wien. Uh, yes, I have about 11. Yeah, I'm sure, Joe, you have to coach at the halftime. And say, hey, look, uh, you know, we're trying to do a little bit too much here. Let's just calm down. We know we're better than the we ready go. Yeah. forwards. Let's just keep it there. Let's grind them out. Let's get the points. And the eight blue. We have to win. And hey, if we have some One and room blue. to move the ball a little bit in the final quarter, final few minutes, we can do that. But, uh, you know, let's get back to basics here. We're here to do a job. And let's get that done first. Well, 24 points in the first half for England, 19 here in the second half. All 17 points by the USA were scored in the first half. And you also got to wonder, the USA played step England this way, yeah. so strong in that first half. You wonder how much that late try by England just before the first half yeah. ended might have taken the wind out of the sails of the U.S. just a bit. Yeah, absolutely. If they had gone to the half uh, all tied up, that would have been a big uh, a big wind for them at their back. But because uh, Bucket got in in the corner just before the break, that uh, took it out Find. of the uh, took a little uh, steam out of them. So, uh, yeah, you know, that's just uh, a psychological thing, and it's uh, it, it's disappointing, you know. It's you get out there, you, you put the points on the board, you draw level, and then you give away One. points pretty quickly. And, you know, it's uh, something you, you got to learn I need to, to, make sure that you to, uh, to deal with is, is not give away those points quickly like that. And this is a growing thing, you know. Uh, some of these players have played at the, at the national, international senior level already, but they're also, Coach. a lot of them, most of them are just growing. Find. really prospects, so it's part of the learning process. Set. So as we... Get close Nine to the end now. of this game. Time to start thinking about the player of the match. In this one, a couple of uh, candidates, certainly from both sides, that you could go with. As we see that right there on the whistle blows. Uh, hearing from Joe via Twitter saying that she's loving watching Kara Brinkett play. Brilliant game. And then just as she tweeted that, Kara uh, Brinkett actually scored a try. And then Joe says, as I say that, she gets her first try. Unbelievably proud. So. That's very cool to see. And that's one of the reasons we're so glad to be able to bring this live stream to you, literally, right around the world. And look at this run from Kenneth. 
She's been dangerous at times for the USA. She passes it off there to her teammate Heinrich. A good phase there by USA. A couple of nice runs, but then there's England recovering defensively and forcing the turnover. Yeah, Kinnett's now moved to fly half. That's her usual position. Uh, Passiolis has slotted into scrum half. Ortiz has gone off, and uh, Trevinsky is on in the back line. But, you know, Kinnett showing her good footwork there. I think, uh, you know... USA would be a little bit disappointed with the lack of opportunities in this half. Uh, they may would have liked to compete a little bit more up front. They got pushed around a little bit. You know, again, it's part of the learning process. You'd expect England to have the stronger forwards. But uh, nice break uh, from Kenneth there. The USA have had a, a few little breaks. That break by Tamavina early certainly thought she was going to score there. But the again, uh, England, you know, 20, England's Charlie defense has Wilcox, been up to the task for this half. Brooke Bradley. So a couple of more reserves onto the field here for England. Number 20, Charlie Wilcock, as well as number 21, Brooke Bradley. So pretty much everybody getting to see the field here for Team England. We're into the very late stages of this game. The game well in hand for the English side. It's 43-17. to 17. Another scrum penalty against the USA just collapsing under pressure. England thoroughly dominated that in the second half. Well, I guess in the... Late in the uh, in the first half, they turned it on as well. Maybe they were taking a little easy to start the game, or maybe maybe the USA just ran out of a little bit of energy at the scrum. But uh, certainly, they've been completely dominant in that facet in this half. The one interesting thing that I've noticed with the United States is, and maybe it's their style of play. England, they've had a couple of good runs, but they're more so about the power game up the middle, and then working the wings, trying to get that. Uh, overlap to the outside, take advantage of it. But there's been a couple of times where the USA has broken really big, long runs. They seem very comfortable looking for that opening and then trying to turn it upfield. It's almost like they look for those big breaks. Right. So in a, a common uh, term, I guess they would call in the Northern Hemisphere, I mean, rugby, as they would say, it, you've got to earn the right to go wide. So you bash forward with the forwards, make a little space, and then you spin it out to the, the glory hogs out in the wings. Whereas uh, the Americans, a little bit different style. They're just looking to use their really good athletes to make those line breaks up the middle. They're not worried so much about building a score. They just want to uh, take it almost from first or second phase right away. So a little bit different style. And we've seen it from Tamavena. We've seen it from Hingano. And we just saw it recently from Kinnett. They get those chances in the open field, and they're really good at kind of finding time and space and making little cuts to get through that defense. But again, just this England side, so complete in all facets, they seem to be able to counter almost anything that their opponent does. And that's why you see, even though the United States has played well and had such a good first half, as we get into the late stages of the game, it's uh, business as usual for England as they lead 43-17. to 17. See if they've got any juice left here. Uh, good attacking position, so if they can win their own ball from the scrum, maybe they'll... Send Hingano hard at the line, see if she can break through. That's been the ticket all day so far. Thought about maybe kicking it forward. Now here's a pass. There's one, there's two. On this near side, this is Alexander Cedric. Cedric, there's a cut I talk about. A lot of American runners are very comfortable faking the pass and then kind of cutting to the inside. They pass it back toward the middle. A big collision over there, and I think the American player, I believe it was Liz Wilson, was on the receiving end, but she's back up and looks to be okay. But that was definitely a big collision. And now look at this. It's Tunin hopping over a defender and making a beeline for the goal line. England recovers quickly defensively to get there, but that was a nice run by number five, Lauren Tunin. She had a very good game. But again, we see they make the break. This is just like Tamavina earlier in her huge line break. They make that break. They get to the corner. And what happens? England gets the turnover at the breakdown. Their defense rock solid. They're not going to give up any points in this half. They're determined. That's unfortunate for the Americans. They really should have had two tries in this half and just stuck. You know, their support, they've got to get their control of the ball in contact. Well, you mentioned the defense. We go back. You talk about turning points sometime. How big now was that defensive stand where it looked like Finau Tamavina was going to break away and get the try, but somehow... England was able to track her down from behind and stop her at the goal line and turn her away. No points. I think if we were going to point to a, a turning point of the game, you know, you can maybe say that Beck has tried just before the half, but I think really that line break by Tamavina failing to score there, England with the turnover, uh, you, you really have to think that was the, uh, the writing on the wall when that happened. So we are getting down to the very late stages now of this first half. 
by my account, we are, are into extra time. Certainly that's very, very unofficial. I would expect within a couple of minutes we'll hear the blasts from the official's whistle to signal the end of this one, and it will be a second victory in this Tri-Nations Cup for the women from England. And full marks to them. They've come as advertised here. Very deep, very balanced, and very good. And here they come again. Passes again, working it from the middle to the wing. Nice recovery on defense by USA. In on the tackle was Heinrich. England now will work it back the other side. Quick pass from Atwood. And now the ball is over to the other side as quickly as it came to the near side. Down there and almost getting stepped on was Leah Bartlett. And then there's the kicking game. England very comfortable doing it. Trying to catch it over the shoulder was Chukinski. Kind of bobbled it for a minute, but USA carries on. Ball over very close to that touch line. USA trying to get up the middle. Again, swarming defense by England. Well, Tunin dropped it, but it's not a knock on it. She's through the line. Here's Tunin. Nice offload. She gets it into the hands of Cedric. Cedric. Down the wing and caught from behind. There's that tenacious defense catching up again by this English side. England going forward at the break down there. So the scrum is awarded to England coming to the end here. Yeah, it's been a, a, a very impressive performance from the English forwards. You'd have to say so many strong performances. Certainly Powell and Mulhern up front have been excellent, dominant in the scrum. Uh, Brinkett and Harper, the two flankers, also outstanding I think if you're looking for the player of the game, though, it's really hard to overlook uh, Sarah Beckett at number eight. Scored two tries, but it wasn't just that. It was a go-forward. She's giving the team strong carrying up the middle. Just all game she's been there. She, you know, got a bang on her shoulder, but stayed with it. A uh, couple big hits in defense. So if, uh, if it was my job, and it just yeah. might be, I think <laughs> Sarah Beckett, the number eight for England, is, is the player of the game in this one. Well, if he wasn't in tears before, if we choose number eight, Sarah Beckett, as the player of the match, well, that just might send her brother over the edge. He might have to go buy a, a Kleenex warehouse, not just a box. So, <laughs> Charlie, I hope you're okay there, but it looks like a very good chance that your little sis, Sarah, will be the player of the match. We'll have to wait and see at the end. I doubt if there'll be a dissenting vote from Charlie. <laughs> so it has been a complete performance, and... You know, we talk about this English side, and the United States certainly has that line break, breakaway speed, but the impressive thing about England is they've got closeout speed. They can catch you from behind, and I think yeah. that's frustrated the U.S. a little bit. Yeah, we saw that Tuima catching uh, Tamavina and Dow with the uh, the early catch on uh, on Hingano. Even though the USA scored on it, you know, that's uh, just showing their pace out wide. So they have it. They haven't used it a lot today. They haven't had to. It's been the forwards doing the bulk of the work but I think we'll see it on Saturday against Canada. There cannot be much time left in this one. It will indeed be England going to 2-0 in this Tri-Nations Cup. And again, England kicks it away. There to receive it was Cherkinski. Long pass over, USA. Last gasp here. And, and there's Ingano with the ball. She was so very good in the first half. She gave it everything she had. She basically put the team on her shoulders. A couple of big runs led to the, tr uh, the first two U.S. tries, and then she scored the third one herself. At the time, with the conversion, it made it 17 all, and we were wondering, hey, what do we got going I on here? Delay back there, but I need yeah, to they were in the game. It was uh, quite surprising, but they did very well, and uh, but yeah, England just showing their class in the second half, completely shutting them off the scoreboard. That'll be, you know, the points are nice. That defensive performance Find. Uh, really... Uh, be pleasing for the coaching staff. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's a good point. That's exactly what England has done here. And they uh, have scored 19 points themselves, and they have shut the United States out. So it's all about small victories and little things to look forward in terms of building on and being positive about. There's Beckett yeah. with the line break. Well, she must know that she's on the line to be <laughs> right player of the cue. match as she makes a big run here in the late stages. And it is after 
She looked to tweak that right shoulder earlier. Great to see Aiden White, Sarah Beckett, back out there rumbling down the field. We are in uh, referee's time. Not sure how long we've got left here. I've got time up, but obviously the referee's got a little bit there. For There have been a couple stoppages for injuries. And I would just like to thank Mother Nature for keeping the rain away for <laughs> this match after we had a pretty heavy downpour earlier when we were broadcasting the Eastern Canadian Rugby Championship. We almost floated away here in our broadcast <laughs> position, Brian. I'm certainly appreciating the rain not being... Well, I'm here. I'm made of sugar. I might have melted out here. Well, we're, we're very glad because I would not have to want to clean sugar up off of your seat. <laughs> so, again, we don't think there's very much time left in this one. We'll see what happens coming out of this scrum. The USA has put in so they'll have one last attack from their, their own end. We'll see if they can conjure up any magic. So putting it in, that's Passiolis for Team USA. They get it out quickly. One quick pass. Now they'll make a dash up the middle. Looking to offload it. No, but they carry it on instead. Now they'll use the kicking game themselves to try and gain some ground. Will it go out? No, tracking it down there. Good job by rushing onto that ball by Victoria Laughlin. And is right back with the kick of her own. Takes it off the hands of Gray for the United States. Now a ruck forms, and USA come away with it. This is Kanet. Just gets it away to Cedric. Cedric now gets swarmed by the defense. Nice job on the tackle there by Phoebe Murray. Jones. No, Finally we've called her name, Tori Jones. Now they'll work it back the other side. There's that little fake pass that the USA likes to try. See if they can get the defense to bite. That time it was Ellie Fromstein. And a big tackle. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Langy Tuwima said, hello, how are you? <laughs> Hit the grass. Oh, my goodness. That was a big physical collision. My, my, my. GG and special right there. Huge that hit. was. And there it is. There's full time. Great win for England. A dominant second half. The USA did well to stay win it, England, stay in until the break, but the second half is just, USA, you know, they showed their class. Fans, England just England putting them to the sword. The forwards put the foot down and hammered it in. Uh, yeah, you know, that, uh, the USA will take a lot from that first half, I think. Uh, you know, this will be have been a long week. They've only played two Fans, games, but they had quite a few bumps and bruises. Only at 22 dressed today, so, you know, the, a lot to learn from this one, and... Uh, a lot, lot to look forward to. Certainly some good prospects out there. We saw the outstanding Hingano. Kenneth uh, certainly lived up to her billing as far as stepping. Some technical things to work on in the scrum, but uh, yeah, lots of positives for them today. Well, now the main tie keep timekeeper didn't check with us to see the player of the match. I don't know if their choice is the same as ours <laughs> after building up that, uh, well, you know what, regardless of what they say at the scorer's table. I like your pick. <laughs> I'm sticking with that, too. I, I, think I she, thought Beckett played very well, so we'll see what they think. She did. She was dynamic. She scored a couple of tries. She had a little stinger in the shoulder. She bounced back, had a big run toward the end. But, hey, they could pretty much pick any of the forwards, and they'd be deserving. So <laughs> yes. if, they, if they pick one of the wingers, we'll be a little upset. We'll be a little upset. So as we see the team shake hands, we'll get your final thoughts, Brian. One game left in this Tri-Nations Cup. It'll be that special match on Saturday at 4 p.m. Atlantic, England and Canada. But as we wrap up here, final thoughts. First of all, on a very game effort by USA. Yeah, strong effort in the first half by the USA. Again, it takes some, uh, some pride out of that. Uh, Tamavina certainly showed her power in the game. Uh, we saw Hingana with a massive performance. Uh, learning experience for the rest. I'm sure the coaches have picked up a couple things. And for England, well, it's nice to see a lot of their uh, second-string players go out there and, and make an impression and, and put a marker down maybe for selection for that big game on Saturday at the Wanderers' grounds. I'm sure the Canadian coaches are here in attendance taking notes furiously. Really looking forward to that one. Uh, it should be a great event. If you, if you have some time and you're in the area, get down, check that one out. That should be a great game. Lots of tickets have already sold for that one, so it should be a great afternoon. I saw the... Uh test match with the men's sides usa and canada uh, back in july the atmosphere in halifax all day long was electric and it was absolutely stunning 
to see the crowd at the Wanderers grounds and the energy uh, for that game. And I would expect much the same on Saturday for England and Canada. And again, as you said, if you're in and around the area in the Halifax Regional Municipality, check it out. Get some tickets for that. Also, it will be the same live stream link. So the link that you have for this game will be the same for that game as well. Check out some of the Eastern Canadian Rugby Championships. That will be taking place all week long, again, right at the same link. On behalf of my broadcast partner, Brian Ray, and our technical producer and camera operator, Brian Fisher, I'm Scott Squires. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a fantastic evening of rugby here. Once again, your final score, England defeats the United States by a score of 43-17. Wherever you're watching this evening, enjoy the rest of your night. Take care, and remember, if you can't take part in sport, be a good one anyway. I'm Scott Squires. Good night from Wolfville.